Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am not familiar with the level of uh, experience uh, you have with management practice and management theory and how much you've been involved in sports and sports management. So what I will say here applies to everyone, uh, every practitioner, every scholar of sports management, but we will not go into a lot of detail because if we do, especially on the steps of the strategic planning process, it will take more than a day, maybe two days to do all of that. Anyway, let me start by saying uh, an often quoted phrase, management is a science, sports is a science, and both have theories and principles that are products of long and careful study and have found practical application. In other words, it's an organized uh, study. To be competitive and to win ethically, and may I emphasize ethically, the mastery of rules and their intelligent use, knowledge of competition, familiarity with the environment, passion, perseverance, discipline, focus, and skills are essential. That's a lot, no? But it's really a lot. Uh, there are simultaneous demands on our character, simultaneous needs for, for uh, good qualities. All these are imperative in an environment of rapid change, uncertainty, extreme pressure, and general uncertainty and unpredictability, especially now in the case of a public health emergency. Now, this presentation will in endeavor to address sport in the context of human, social, and economic development. Sports are not just games. They require certain values, values needed for social and economic development. And, and the role of this, uh, it's the role in the for value formation and leadership. In short, we will deal with the management aspects of leading and evolving a sports organization. As part of our attempt to provide a comprehensive view of Philippine sports or to get some kind of lay of the land, I will present two models which I have used as early as 1995 when I was chairman of the Philippine Sports Commission and when we prepared the first ever sports master plan in Philippine history. You know? It is like saying that you get, to, you get to familiarize yourself with the supply chain of Philippine sports. Now, this first model divides Philippine sports into mass sports and high level performance sports. This model depicts how sports is supposed to be ideally organized prior to the pandemic with minor changes introduced. The left part of the diagram shows each national government department and NGO contributing their share to promote physical fitness and wellness by organizing, by organizing sector game to uh, sector games, students, armed forces, labor, government, employees. So it's really a multi-sectoral thing as guaranteed by our Philippine constitution, the state, and by the state that means entire apparatus, promotes physical development. So there is constitutional basis for this type of scheme. Okay, so you will see it little by little, the boxes are being filled. It's practically the entire government. And then you move on to the PSC, which is in the middle of mass sports and high performance sports. But at the same time, the PSC is supposed to coordinate this. And if I may say, should be the glue that binds all of these sports together as a government agency. So you see here, you see the 
slime evolving, developing, and at the core, at the center, is uh, Philippine sports. Now, there is an item here called National Youth, National Sports Youth Talent Reserve. Uh, that was a concept that we tried to promote, but we were not able to uh, carry out because of lack of time. There was a change in administration. The middle diagram shows the Philippine Sports Commission, not in the middle of the diagram, as a coordinator and integrator that promotes interaction between mass sports and high level sports. High level sports includes the National Sports Associations and the Philippine Olympic Committee. The culmination of the participation in high level sports is participating in multi sports events like the Olympics, Asian Games. Southeast Asian Games, CCM, and World and Regional Championship. The high-level sports has another term sometimes used that is high performance or elite sports. The next diagram, the sports development pyramid, shows the na na natural progression of participation starting from mass sports at the bottom of the pyramid as the foundation of sports programs. That is the next slide. At the apex are sports for entertainment, exemplified by professional sports. So you will see here the gradual progression from, uh, that, let's like, it's, it's like going from grade school to high school, up to middle school, and then going into college, junior college and then going to senior college and then going to masters and then doctorate and other studies uh, and then so you see here the the pyramid and as you can see the participants the participation narrows as you go from one step to the other that's why we always say if you want to uh, do a talent search uh, of our people to, to, to develop athletes, it's easiest to get 1,000 good athletes from 10 million people than it is to get 1,000 athletes from 10,000 people. You have a wider uh, selection base. So moving now, uh, we now go into management and business. We started talking first about the uh, sports sector or some people would say sports industry now to, to have a uh, better uh, appreciation of the um, case studies that we will use as examples of leading and evolving sports organizations let us make a distinction between management and business or between management and business functions. Um, some people may say it's a, it's a very fine line, and fine line distinction, but I don't think so in the sense that it's very clear. Management functions, as formulated by Henry Fayot, a Frenchman, include planning, which is uh, uh, looking ahead, which is step, step one, that is at 12 noon of the diagram, um, which makes the exercise, its planning is basically looking ahead, trying to predict the future, trying to create a vision, trying to create an outcome, meaning a result, a desired result, a desired outcome. That's why it's more challenging. The next is the organizing. You've got which is on, uh, which is at 10 o'clock, uh, sorry, uh, which is at two o'clock of the, of the, uh, of the um, diagram, which is basically marshalling, the, getting the people, getting the resources, uh, directing, some people use the term commanding, which uh, I would not like to use too much, because um, uh, this is a, generally we're talking about uh, people doing things because of uh, 
well thought out uh, directives. No? Controlling, which includes basic functions like monitoring, that is part of controlling. And finally, some people, well, this is not in files um, functions, it is leadership, providing the leadership uh, to an organization. Well, there is a term here called staffing that is part of the organizing, no? organizing and staffing. A leadership, uh, and that normally means helping define, define the core values of the organization. What are the, what are the values which are important to this organization? Uh, is dishonesty an important value to this organization? Is defiance of authority or a value, a core value of this organization? So that is what leadership means, no? providing an example, being a role model. Now, business functions are the, are the usual business functions which a lot of you have been uh, conducting, doing uh, consciously or unconsciously. Uh, you have functional areas. What are the functional areas of business? Operations, okay? Uh, that should have a separate slide. Uh, and then production. If you either produce objects, materials, or you produce a service, okay? It's either a service or a material, or a concrete subject, or a concrete object. Marketing, marketing means selling a product. Marketing, and then finance, human resource management. Another way of looking at this, which I did not put here anymore, is the so-called um, is a is another management practice the, uh, um, where you define the organization in terms of human development. So you start at the bottom part. Everything starts starts with human development, human resource development. Whom you train, whom you train to operate certain processes efficiently effectively, uh, which produce certain services, which is the production side, through an operations process, which you then market. And a successful marketing campaign means more finance. So it really starts with the development of people, the human development. You know? um, that is the uh, scorecard, what we call the scorecard of business. Now, we go into the formulation of a strategic plan with the corresponding business plan, uh, in which involves rigor, necessitating the use of some framework of analysis. Okay, you will see here this uh, uh, diagram. Um, in a non-page engagement involving the uh, revisiting and updating of the strategic plan of the Asian Athletics Association, or AAA, formerly known as the Continental Asia Strategic Plan. That is the strategic plan for the AAA. That is the Regional Association of Athletics, which has a membership of 45 countries uh, including China, Japan, Korea, and small countries like the Philippines, and other countries like Nepal, Bhutan, uh, Maldives, and all of that. So a whole gamut of countries involved in some, in, in, including Singapore. No? Uh, we employ as part of the process and review the strategic planning models in the public and non-profit sports organizations by Thomas Primadis and Elena C. Hugh of the Department of Sports Management, uh, University of Pelop Peloponnese, Greece. Actually, there are other models by other uh, authors, no? Uh, I have my own private model. I derive from years of study, but you know, I, I, I just share this one with you. First is review of data. 
what data do you need? When you do your actual planning, you need basic data about different aspects. A more a very sophisticated planning session, let's say of a big bank, will include data on the national economy because they have to see the trends of the Philippine economy as a bank. So you will see your prospects in the economy. In our case, if you're planning for your own organization, you don't need a rigorous study on the national economy. As if we need to know the gross domestic product, the share of debt, of national debt as part of the, the gross domestic product. We don't know, need to do that. Uh, we probably can just present readily available data which shows general condition of the economy. The data generated or provided by the organization internally. After responding to specific pointed questions asked by the strategic planning facilitator are important. Normally what we do when we do a strategic planning session, a few days, probably at least one week before the planning session, we prepare a questionnaire and we send it out to the participants identified by management who will be part of the planning session. The questionnaire can be anywhere from 15 to 20 questions asking about the planning, what will be required of everybody. Number one, humility. Number two, the ability to listen. Number three, to provide data objectively, honestly, and to do some introspection. Think of your organization based on your experience and how you see it performing. So th those will be key, key data that we will use in our planning session. Questions could range from getting the respondents' views of the past performance of the organization. And here, you have to emphasize to the participants the need for data or for honesty, but at the same time, uh, you, we have to assure the confidentiality of the response. No, we, we will share the response, but we will protect their names if they, they feel very sensitive about it. The survey could also be used to indicate early divergence of or similarity of views. For example, when you see the responses in the surveys, you will notice right away the extreme answers. One will say our company did very well. The other one will say we did very poorly. So it shows that there is lack of uh, harmony. People look at it differently. Some people may look at it half empty, others half full. So that is one area of inquiry and that is one area where you should probably exercise a little more care and discretion when you start talking about these things because this will have to be discussed in a, as a, in a plenary. You know? A lot of this data that you will discuss uh, will normally be expounded by the, uh, by the respondent in smaller groups that uh, that you will divide the into you will divide the big group into and then you go back into the plenary later there's a lot of this exercise of a uh, small group preparing to the smaller rooms to other rooms and then returning to the big room as plenary summarizing the thoughts the views the views of the other of the small groups now in our analysis of the data now you have internal data, okay? You will have to look at the external data. And there is a word that is used here, an acronym that I'm sure some of you have encountered. It's called PESEL or PESLE, P-E-S-L-E. -E. Uh, the slide will show that, no? Uh, what does it stand for? Political, 
Okay, I'm sure uh, a lot of people can say something about that privately, but not um, openly. Economic, well, you have to look at this because your sports association operates in a particular economic environment. Social, okay, um, what are the trends, the aspirations, consumer, consumer trends, consumer behavior. Uh, the more data you have on that, the better for everybody. Technological, well, it's all over the place. There we have what we call the disruptors, okay? Uh, now we are talking about uh, school, is, school is back, but no person-to-person -person interaction. It's a, a lot of it is uh, uh, online. That is technological. That means we're looking at connectivity, broadband, and all of that. Legal, okay? Of course, this is never lost in all of our discussions. Environmental. Okay, what does the environment look? And finally, because we are in a particular situation, the public health emergency issues. By the way, let me just say that a planning session is an exercise in proactivity and reactivity. A strategic plan is both proactive and reactive. It is proactive and it is also both the exercise of the bottom-up approach and the top-to-bottom approach, okay? There is a lot, there should be a lot of democracy in this planning session, no? Now, so you have a lot of these factors that you will all discuss, okay? Even in your small groups, and you will analyze these factors and see how they impact your organization. The analysis of that is what is called the environmental scan or the environmental analysis in general, which is separate from the environmental uh, analysis of the PESEL. Okay, this is the overall, after putting together all of your analysis of the political, economic, social, technological, what do they say? What are the issues? The next tool, of analysis, which is, next slide please, which is combined with PESEL, is the SWOT, everybody has seen this, SWOT or TOS, P-O-W-S or S-W-O-T. So we will just use the basic one. SWOT stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and the SWOT analysis involves accounting for the strength and weakness of an organization. Here is, this is, this is the point where I say you really have to be honest with yourself, with your organization, and be uh, objective and candid, because if you get into some kind of an assessment and you delude yourself into saying that everything is just fine and dandy, then you will come up with a plan which does not contain steps to uh, overcome emerging problems, okay? You just did a disservice to yourself and to the organization. And then we have the OP, opportunities and threats. And you know, all, all business schools will tell you OP has to do with everything that is from outside the organization, whereas SW, strengths and weaknesses, it's internal or opposite organ, uh, opportunities and threats are from the outside. The most obvious and biggest threat, also an opportunity from the outside at this time, October 3, 2020, is the pandemic. That is a threat that everyone has to deal with. And we see it. And we as sports managers, sports leaders, Live with it day to day. I'll just give you an example. It's so hard to put together a competition. You have to go through so many obstacles. First is legal, IATF. So you see that's part of the environment, okay? You already know what happened to a particular uh, uh, golf club, which failed 
to give notice or probably neglected or probably was even uh, unaware of the need to seek the permission of the IATF and for which the club has been, at least the, the operations of the club, the golf operations, have been uh, ordered to, to stop. No? Um, another example of a threat is the diversion, especially for us, of the interest of the youth to non-sports activities. You see a lot of this. Um, you see the, the use of, uh, uh, sometimes the excessive use of uh, social media. Why do I say youth? The youth make up the majority of the world's population. And basically, uh, they are the market of sports, not just from a participant point of view, but from a spectator point of view. Now, while honesty, objectivity, and candor are required at all times, they are most crucial in times of introspection and assessment. That is what I meant. When you go through a planning session, if you go there with the attitude that you will try to bring down or criticize somebody in the organization, either directly, indirectly, or you will go there with a baggage um, that, you have, that you are very sarcastic, uh, you, you will not have a productive time. You should go there with an open mind and be open. As they say in Tagalog, hindi pwede yung balat sibuyas dito. You cannot be onion skin here. Uh, what are social uh, trends? For example, I will use the, uh, the United States as an example because we do not have data like that in the Philippines. Or if we do, it's, it was very uh, specific and it was not shared with the public. It did not belong to the public domain. Athletics on, at the collegiate level in the United States reveal that audiences are looking for, I'm looking for particular features which they, which they uh, when they attend athletics sporting events. I'm referring to athletics. Huh? Uh, there are other sports, uh, athletics, track and field. And um, we are honing in on the audiences because they are lifeblood. Without the audiences, we cannot stay alive because sp sponsors look for audiences. They look for how many eyes are in the stadium, how many eyes see the billboard, how many eyes see the TV spot uh, when, when this event is televised, how many people go to the digital platforms like um, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, um, other, I, other uh, platforms and mention the name of the company in relation to the activity. Uh, they're interested in that. A study conducted by the ACOM or AECOM for the University, Ohio University Department of Sports Administration uncovered that premium spending, premium seating rather, you see it in, the, in this diagram, you see the most important, the least important, and they've graded it. And you see uh, premium seating, food and beverage options, and wireless connectivity are the top three priorities of the audience. Why? Premium seating, because you want to have a full view. Uh, that's why you design your stadium so that everybody has a vantage point. None of this post, none of this being blocked by the basketball uh, uh, backboard or whatever, uh, you are also looking at food and beverage. Uh, you know, this is one of the reasons, and I used to uh, be part of the management of one of our uh, arenas, and I would often kid our managers and the tournament organizer, please uh, prolong your halftime instead of 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Why? To allow the people to go out and, and buy food because actually that helps the uh, venue uh, generate the sources. Um, that's why sometimes if you see that the uh, half time is too long, uh, you can probably say that, but you know, there are also te technical reasons for that. Wireless connectivity, and this should help you. This should help the sport because while the young audience is there, they, they do get in touch with their, uh, 
with their uh, colleagues and they show, they, they show, they do selfies, they show, uh, they, they put it in the, they go to the Facebook, they do Instagram, they, they do so many things there which will help. The, so this is cardinal. When you go out of town and have an event, make sure that connectivity or else tayo tayo lang manonood nga yung mga tiga roon lang. Okay? We want to expand and our sponsors will not be too happy with that. They make account. They look at media values. You know that? Um, now, we talked er earlier, we said that one of the things that we have to look at, at PESEL, in PESEL is technologies, technological. Emerging technologies will blur the line uh, between real and virtual life and lead to a growing personalization of consumer goods and retail experience. You see this in the way you behave online. We now have a lot of these online purchases especially among us seniors who would rather not go out or are probably not allowed to go yet under the IF, IATF rules. So you have to take advantage of that. Do not just surrender. As a sports leader, you have to see how you can live with that and take advantage of that. That is a problem, but at the same time, it is an opportunity. Okay? There are many ideas that we can discuss here which we can do without having to congregate so that you don't run afoul of IATF rules. There are many things you can do. Uh, many tournaments that can be uh, had. It's a personal tournament. Okay. Mobile will solidify further its status as the preferred method of access and receive information. Our telephone, uh, the biggest uh, cell, cell phone, one of the biggest developments in the century. Analysis and, assu and assumption formulation combine PESEL and SWOT. That is the next slide. Putting together your analysis of the PESEL and the SWOT, you see all of those issues and they can be overwhelming. That's why you need time to predict this and you need time to, to do this. Recently, um, another sports association approached me and asked me if I could help them uh, develop programs that will attract sponsors. I don't know how I got that reputation, but I told them, um, how long is your term of office? The person said so long. Oh, so we are looking at at least a medium term and probably a long term. We have to do a plan, I said, because the plan will produce the program and the ideas that you can sell to your sponsor, prospective sponsor. And sponsors will look for plans. They will look for programs. They will not generally look at you and just say, this is a one-time support. If it's a one-time support, you get the peanuts. But if they see it makes sense over the long term, you build a relationship with them. And you build an independent relationship with them where they will not require that you get their executive to be part of your, to be part of your management team. Uh, we at Patapa, we have a sponsor and we invited them into the board because they're a reputable, knowledgeable, and it's a board. There is no interference in the way the, the, the man is. Uh, on the other hand, I must also realize that the sponsors probably have to exercise some oversight functions, no? uh, which I think um, is their, is their uh, prerogative. Uh, resolving, when you see those, you combine the PESEL and the SWOT, you see issues right away. It's the issues are there before you, and one issue is also the way they were delivered by the persons who, who surfaced those issues. As I said earlier, you will see here some relational problems as you do the planning. 
start people start talking to each other. When you look at all of these issues that resolve in the PESEL, uh, that emerge from the PESEL in this one, you get a very clear idea that these are the issues which will form the core of your objectives and strategy formulation. You know, nakita nyo, you, the, you see those things and they will say, for example, lack of full-time people, an issue. That is an issue always with the NSAs because it's a volunteer organization that will have to be part of your program. How do you lift that problem uh, and at the same time finance? You know, what I've learned in NGOs, out of the many, many things that we have to be concerned with, and finance is one of them, just make sure if you have the money that you reserve funds for the fixed overhead. Lagi yung renta, kung merong renta ang sinisingil, yung sweldo ng dalawa o tatong tao, their SSS, their field health, all of their things, all of those things. That has to be kept in that. Okay? Especially the SSS and field health. Those are government. Uh, there are, uh, we have, uh, there is an employee requirement, there is an employee contribution, there is an employer contribution which you are supposed to remit. Please take a look at those. You know, you could get into legal trouble. Now, I don't know the state of uh, some of our organizations, whether they have an existing vision, mission statement, or, or if they're going to start from scratch. Uh, next slide, please. Um, if they will uh, uh, start from scratch. Now, you see here a very appropriate diagram here. You see the vision, yung mata. You see it from the lens, from your lens, okay? And the mission, that's, that is the overall long-term target, okay? The vision, the vision and mission support each other. And then you've got the values. The values actually dictate your vision and mission. If, for example, your value is to earn money at any cost, then your vision is to set up even illegal businesses, okay? Or do things illegally. Um, that goes contrary to the values of a sportsman, which is honesty, integrity, respect for laws. Um, now, if there is an existing vision mission, you review it using the PESEL and SWOT, SWOT framework. Now, next slide. One planning session was conducted and, um, and for some of its it conducted, well, we conducted had for some of its goals, institutional strengthening, membership activation, uh, membership uh, strengthening of coaching, marketing, uh, gather empirical market data, financial, viability, hiring specific special expertise, that has always been a goal. Now, we, we could enter into some uh, uh, arguments here or discussions on what's the difference between a goal and objective. Well, as you can see from this diagram, it is the broader, broader mission, it's a broader goal. It's, uh, it's generally stated, it's broader. While the objective is a more detailed uh, statement, like for example, in a, in a war, we are trying to capture a city, for example. That is the goal. But our objective is to capture these two hills between the city and our and us. And it is being occupied by our enemies. So the objective is capture the city, capture the hill in order to capture the city. Now, capturing the city now becomes part of the you will go after a bigger goal capture the, the, the district, okay? So the, you have a new goal, you have attained a new objective, a goal which became an objective, which was capturing the city. Now you go to a bigger goal, capture it. Now what is the biggest goal? Capturing the country, I suppose. So that's just to, to highlight the difference between the objective goal, the difference between objective and goals. 
Now, let us move on. Um, we are transforming and evolving. Next slide. Uh, evolving Patapa, modesty aside, to help NSA, our NSA, transform there. We are here and we want to serve as some kind of a model or best practice. Uh, and we have been approached by, as I said, by one other NSA, an Olympic sport, asking for uh, us for assistance. And we said, sure, uh, we're very happy to do this because your development is the development of the sport community. Now, every interaction we have at Patafa with our clients, we call them clients or stakeholders, their customers, our colleagues, and the communities when we operate are guided by a certain vision and certain values. And that is the way it is. You conduct yourself with, uh, with others, you relate with and to others, bearing in mind your vision and values. I think one of the key elements here is, uh, for example, I will give you a <coughs> sample vision. Let me, next slide. <coughs> By the way, you have a finished sample vision here, but it takes hours and even days just to arrive at the sample vision, at a vision, as those of you have been through a planning session. Uh, you go from concepts to words, and you have a lot of spirited arguments here until you end up and say, let us leave it up to the word sniffs, okay? Because there is a tendency to be verbose. And here, this is going to be one exercise in humility when you do the vision and mission. Well, what do I mean by humility? Putting the interest of the organization ahead of your own personal interest or agenda. You just have to decide when you get into this discussion, what am I doing here? Do I want to be right or do I want to build a relationship? Tama ka nga. You got your word in. But nagkagulo kayo, nagtampuhan pa. Eh, what, what, what was that for? Okay? That's why, just, well, what is it? Do I want to build a relationship or do I want to be right? You know, to insist. That's why I said a lot of humility is needed here. It says here, our vision is for our organization. Let's say, put it as swimming is to be widely recognized as the leading sport course in the growth of our sport in the Philippines. And right, so you should aim for that as swimming. Why? We are a coastal country. We have so much water area here. Why don't we use it to develop your sport? You are favored by the natural environment. The weather is just right for, for swimming. Uh, unlike other countries, we do not have heated pools here as much as developed countries do. Okay. Uh, Another emission amount, which is more um, not, not specific, we lead the development of our sport in the Philippines. Some will put a timeline, okay, and say we lead our sport, we lead the development of our sport in the Philippines in 10 years, okay. Of course, every other NSA also has this mission to lead the development of sport. So you are competing with other. Uh, sports associations or organizations. No? Now, uh, the next slide, another reformulation of the vision. Our sport is to be the, our, for our sport to be the sport of choice in the Philippines. Oh, Meaning, if, for example, if a parent has a six year old, seven year old girl, they want to introduce the sport, they will ask, what sport will I introduce our daughter to? Top of mind dapat, if you want to be the sport of choice, is your sport, what is it? Taekwondo, tennis, badminton, track and field, volleyball, basketball, karate, harness, uh, several other sports there, cycling, 
archery, uh, bowling, and dami niyan. They are all competing for attention of the community. Another formulation of the vision, our organization, let's say our karate organization, will be recognized as the most successful and professional organization among NSAs in the Philippines. Well, that is just a formulation. Actually, there is no one body here in this country that officially accredits and certifies organizations as class A, class B, and says they are the most organized and the most successful. There is no, that is what we call, what the community considers. No, it's like a, some people will even say it's bragging rights. Next slide, please. Slide, slide, please. Next is the sample mission to grow and manage our sport in the Philippines by providing, here, meron ang developmental aspects to, by providing educational programs to youth and development initiatives for aspiring professionals in the field and to promote our sport as a lifestyle for all Filipinos regardless of age, talent, gender, capability, religion, and creed. You see, they talk about educational programs, meaning dealing with the Department of Education, aspiring professionals, training for coaches, for masseurs, for uh, 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 strength, and strength and conditioning coaches of your sport. Another slide, please. To sum it up, okay. To sum it up, the organization's vision mission and values as a consolidated message is the beacon or the lighthouse that guides sailors who are in the rough high seas high rough seas in the middle of a stormy night it is our refuge our shelter during very difficult moments consider yourself out in the ocean you are lost it's stormy your vision is your visibility is limited and you see a light the light guides you towards that okay so our vision mission and values are the things are the things that should guide us during those stormy nights when we have crisis when there is a crisis there is an ethical dilemma okay but will this my solution in accord is promote our vision promote our values or will it destroy or undermine our vision and mission? Tama ba ito? Is this me? When I make this decision, can I wake up in the morning and look at myself straight in the mirror and say, I like you. And it goes on for other things in life, especially in the political life of this country. You should be able to look yourself at the mirror and say that I like what I see but I am at peace when I did what I thought was correct. Never mind the criticisms that will come in later. Uh, a thousand criticisms will not make right what your critics are saying. Okay, now another, let's move on. Now I will present to you the characteristics, and this is nothing new to you. Because when you do the planning, eventually you will go to the, if we, later on, we will go back to the strategic planning process. Is it easy to go back to that, uh, uh, Edward, or Frank made up, no? Because, okay, never mind. We'll just stay here. And then probably before we end, I will go back. Now, what are the following uh, objectives of the following characteristics? You know this, smart, no? It is simple. Straight to the point, uh, for example, to have three competitions per year. If that is your, your NSA, three, then you can define the competitions. Is this national competition or say only one if it's national competition? Basta, it should be clearly understood by everybody. Number two, it is measurable. Um, there you will see management guru say, if you can't measure it, you cannot manage it. 
That's what Peter Drucker says. In other words, you know, it must be quantified. Uh, you, you will say that we will consider our objective to bring in 1,000 athletes. Okay, if you have a way, I'm sure you must have a way of measuring them, the athletes coming, because you have such a thing as regist registration. No? Okay, number three, achievable. There's no point in uh, committing to uh, achieve exaggerated goals, especially during this pandemic. To, uh, let's say, to have, as I said, to have competitions, number one. Number two, to have so many people inside the venue. You cannot do that. It's very limited. Um, it must be relevant. The attainment of a particular, particular goal is, full, is in full support of your vision and mission. It does not contradict your vision and mission. The objective does not contradict. And number five, it is time bound. Deadlines have to be determined to avoid wandering aimlessly, meaning we must achieve this by a certain date. For example, we want to grow our membership in two years to 200. On the first, on the first six, after the first six months, you check and find out from your membership committee, oh, where are we? Do we have already 200 members? Maybe we should adjust. If, it's, if we can get more done, we will increase the, object, the target. Not scale it down. Scale it down. Okay. Now I'll I'll give you samples of objectives. Slide 25. To mobilize and maintain a consistent source of funds. This is always a problem. Uh, of funds to enhance sustainability. This is this is our major problem. Sustainability. Okay in our organization's programs. You may have, you may lay out the finest programs, but they're all dreams because we cannot sustain. Why? Because we do not have the financial backing. And you have the financial plan, but the plan does not include how you will raise it. It just shows the goals. Another objective, to increase the interest in our sport of sponsors and participants alike. Oh, yeah. um, if there are more participants and there's more audience, your sponsors will, will, will be happier to come in, okay? To contribute to the desire of individuals to improve health, wellness, and fitness for a fuller, for a finer and fuller life. Okay, this is a different, this is a different uh, objective uh, addressed to a different niche requiring a different approach, but, if your program is so successful and you generate so much activity and interest in your sport, everybody will be interested in improving their health. You know, the popularity of jogging, okay, has, has, in, has the popularity of marathons has benefited jogging and has, of course, benefited the athletic sport. Now, one of the bases of strategy is the analysis of SWOT. As I mentioned that earlier, no? it is a basis, not the basis. Okay? It is highly suggested that a SWOT per strategy. So this makes it even more time consuming. If you have so many strategies, you better do it. You better do a SWOT per strategy. Because then you will have to look at the strength, weakness, or opportunities. And, thre and, and threats, no? Um, okay, now, uh, a sample of a SWOT based on strategy of developing a viable organization which has chronic problem of inducing participation of members, okay? That is a strategy. Now, implementing a strategic plan often involves a whole series of change management, which is now on the screen. Change management initiatives to get the support of the whole organization. By the way, it is not said here, but it is, it is implied. When you come up with a new plan, a strategic plan, you are up and you are trying to get the organization to implement it after having been used to a particular plan. 
you are really undertaking a change management process. So uh, to bring the changes to fruition, it is recommended to have greater chances of it being brought to fruition. It is recommended the organization be guided by the eight-step framework for leading change by John Cotter. So you will see here, I hope you can see it. Number one, um, establish a sense of urgency by making, by looking at market and competitive realities. Looking at competitive and market realities and sense of urgency. You know what I mean by sense of urgency, my interpretation is that you try to be as opportunistic as you can be. And I don't mean opportunistic in yung mapagsamantala. Opportunistic in a pejorative sense, not in a pejorative sense, meaning any opportunity to you get to promote your sport, please do it. If you're in a gathering and if parties were still allowed and you start talking to people and you know what do you do, that usual question drops up, what do you do, I do this, I'm in business, but as a hobby, I'm a, an officer in this, in this particular NSA, we do this, and you know, one thing leads to another. Always, that's what I mean by opportunistic. Hindi mapagsamantala, not to, not to take advantage of others. Create a guiding coalition with enough power to lead change within your organization. Create a coalition. There are people there who are naturally uh, cooperative. Bring them in, especially if they are very much in great influence within your organization. Create a vision for change. We, we said that, no? And develop managers that will achieve that vision. You know, we said earlier, kulang, kulang lagi sa tao. There are one or two people in your organization, in your NSA, whom you see share with you the same outlook and can tell you when he, when he or she disagrees with you. Cultivate that. Cultivate that person uh, to help you. Uh, communicate that vision to, to your people so that it becomes real. Um, and the best way to communicate it is to leave it out, not just to memorize it and parrot it. Uh, generate quick wins. You know, my own experience uh, in uh, joining organizations, especially ones which are very public, that the media is looking at. While you make your plans, you look for those things, the so-called low-lying fruits, where, which you can, where you can achieve some immediate or semi-immediate semi visible successes, okay? And do not have too many objectives. There are so many issues. We cannot be everything to everybody. Oh. Consolidate improvements and produce more change by using increased credibility. So you see, when you have those little victories, quick wins, so to speak, your credibility is enhanced among your people and even among the other stakeholders. And you, you, you have created a momentum, a momentum. And then you realize, oh, this approach works. This doesn't work. This, you know, in other words, you get to see the logic of your industry, the logic of the business of institutionalized new approaches by, by, by articulating the connections between new behavior and organizational uh, success. Meaning, make an, tell the people in your organization, we did this and it resulted in this success. So there is reality. Connect it. Do not leave it hanging. You have to bridge that gap. Now I end. Okay. Um, I just like to end with certain thoughts. Next slide. I mentioned the low line principle. Low line food principle. Go after this. Go after this. Put your time. If, for example, uh, it means uh, setting up a competition in a country club where you are a member, uh, just to get your people involved in an activity. You are a member, so it's easier for you to, to do, to coordinate. Okay, make it a very, very specialized uh, event, maybe only for kids this age. 
constant monitoring. When we have projects, my own behavior, and I think my, my colleagues will attest to this, is makulit ako. I monitor, I check, I ask. At any time of day, early morning, late at night, if I don't want to do that because I'm a little ashamed, I text myself so that in the first morning, the first hour that I wake up, I see it and I monitor. I ask, what's going on? What's going on? And uh, number, well, it's not here. Part of constant monitoring is meeting, a group meeting. You have Zoom now. That's one of the blessings. You don't have to travel. You just, so you can check face to face what's going on. Uh, are our protocols ready? If, for example, you're mounting a competition, protocols for what? For the play of field, for the, for the dorm, if you will, for the medical protocol, if people, in other words, how are we complying with the IATF or the PSC prescriptions? Do we have those people available? Maximize available talent. And uh, as I said, you have within your uh, organization some people you can depend on. If you cannot hire others and, uh, and, uh, and you cannot get new ones, work with what you have. Work with what you have. You have, just have to be a little more patient and you have to develop. Now, I have here the word grit. Grit is passion and perseverance. Kasipagan. There is no substitute for hard work and smart work. Passion, you have to be passionate with what you're doing. Passionate in the sense that you will be willing to wake up in the middle of the night when you remember something about your project and note it down and then rem remind yourself to do something about it the next day. Passion. To really get, let's say, to make kulit the powers that be who will give you the funding. Okay? Now, important thing, focus, eyes on the ball. Do not be distracted by other concerns. That's why for those of us who are in sports and in business, it takes some discipline to separate. Some people solve that well, in business and at the same time in sports by delegating. Uh, major, yes, I'm for that, but there is a limit. Because at some point, you really have to know the logic and know your people firsthand. And you have to have a hands-on experience with this team. You cannot be too much of an armchair general, giving orders left and right and without you knowing the details. In fact, I think the general rule is don't give orders. Don't, don't ask your people to do things which you cannot do. The only reason you cannot do it is because you have other things to do for the organization also. And that the talent is best used by that person using that, uh, performing that task. So if we can go back to the, that is slide, where did I am, Yeah, okay. So that they can see the whole of it. Okay, there. You gather the data. You've got your external, your internal data. You have the assumptions. No, when you prepare your uh, objectives, you have to make some assumptions, and that's why data is data are needed. The less data you have available, the more assumptions you will make. And if it's all assumptions, you have a weak case because it's not grounded on evidence on data. Now, if you are analyzing the wrong data, you will have a wrong analysis. You have a wrong planning. And then you will probably have a half vision and your mission will be, will go all right, no? Um, now, everyone has to make a commitment to this 
then you will have your uh, vision and mission. Um, and then you go to the business plan. You know, this can be become, can become very laborious to go down. That's why I said I can only go up to a certain level. Because the business plan is a separate exercise by all, all by itself. You discuss, you discuss the nitty gritty. Uh, okay, so you can see the entire planning process. We have to plan because we have to prepare a roadmap. Uh, if, for example, I ask you, you ask me, how do I go from here to Makati, where I am, to Nagotas? And I tell you, to go to Nagotas, you go to Alabang first, and then you go to Taguig, and then Pateros, then you go to, to, to the final destination. So in other words, you, you waste time. Anyway, so I attempted to, to give you some insights, and I hope uh, you found them instructive, informative, and useful. Thank you. Uh, sir, sir. Yeah. Uh, that was that was an expensive and uh, very very uh, and compact amount of knowledge uh, pertaining to sport management. Uh, given the time, the short time that you are allowed to discuss this uh, uh, discipline and this body of knowledge, uh, it's uh, really a great opportunity even from you, being one of our uh, experts in the field here in the Philippines. Now, we move on, sir, to the next part of the talk, uh, which is a Q&A. I have prepared uh, from my list uh, some uh, some questions, and uh, I guess uh, we have also other questions, questions from our from uh, participants. participants. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, and my first question, sir, is uh, okay. Given the extensive uh, uh, experience and uh, time that you had in uh, uh, in sports, uh, uh, particularly uh, administration and management. Uh, how would you how would you evaluate and assess your experience so far to date? Well, in uh, in my involvement in sports, especially, uh, there were of course very enriching moments. Uh, one of the most uh, enriching that I experienced was the preparation and challenging the preparation of the sports master plan of the Philippines, the first one of its kind. That's the roadmap which unfortunately was uh, uh, put in the circular file by the people who came after me. Uh, uh, that was a sad moment, but at least it was on paper. One of the most enriching moments in my, my life uh, as a sportsman was uh, when I initiated and uh, orchestrated the development of the, the preparation and completion of the first ever sports master plan in Philippine history. That was the master plan for sports, the roadmap, over the next four years. It was supposed to be a four-year cycle from 1996 to 2000, during the time of President Ramos, um, when I was chairman of the Sports Commission. Uh, unfortunately, those who succeeded us uh, did not care too much about it, probably did not understand it, and uh, put it inside the circular fire, the, maybe the bazaars. No? So, but what happened was, I, had, I, I anticipated that. So what I did, I put it in a book. Uh, I wrote about it and I featured it, some parts of it, in a book that I wrote it's called, called Sports and Governance sports and governance, all vaulting at that time, huh? all vaulting into the 21st century. So that was a happy moment. And the sad moment was when I realized it was going to be there in the uh, uh, circular file. And the happy moment was when I put it, here, put, put, a book, put it into a book. We had a book launching and it was oversold. And a lot of people commented to me about it. And I remember President Ramos bringing it with him to his foreign trips. Uh, to, 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 that was the biggest compliment that I received.
Yeah, that's it. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, in connection with that, sir, because we have, I need to connect that with one of the questions we received from our um, audience, and, and particularly coming from Ms. Dina Bernardo. She is asking uh, if there's a unified vision of sports for the country. Let's say unified. Even that, uh, you mentioned vision for the country, the sport, for the sports for the, in the country. The only thing that I can think of now in terms of a document is the constitution which says sports physical fitness is a priority and the sports are encourage it and all of that. So meaning in general encourage sports whereas the unifying vision at that moment in time uh, I am not aware of although I'm I am aware that uh, uh, Chairman Butch Ramirez uh, and Mark Velasco uh, uh, led a group to try and uh, come up or update it or, or do something with it to prepare some kind of a vision. Uh, I am not aware now uh, and uh, I don't have the information. Uh, okay, so let's uh, move on to uh, next question. Uh, of course, sir, your, your, your sports, ma sports management career uh, is not entirely smooth sailing. Uh, I would assume that there were many uh, were many circumstances that were marred by humps and bumps. Uh, how did you deal with them? Well, I will tell you first what are those humps and bumps. And those are the distractions, a major one. When people, in their desire to undermine you, uh, bring you, let's say, to the ombudsman. Okay? For very, very capricious reasons. I remember the NBI brought me to the ombudsman on the charge that I forged my own signature. Even the ombudsman at that time, um, I forgot his name now, uh, said, this is a stupid charge. It will just result in a record of the ombudsman having a lost record in its prosecution record. Imagine, say, forging your own signature. It's this thing, sir. These are the distractions. And that is one of the differences between running a sports organization in government and a sports organization in the government. Why? Basically, pare-pareho rin yan eh. In fact, sa government na, it should be easier in the sense that you have a budget eh. If Congress gives you a budget, you don't have to, of course, you will worry about how to use that budget, which is not enough. No? How to make it enough, yeah? make it, how it will fit your needs. But it's there already. Unlike in the private sector, no? you still have to work for that budget. If oh, big enough, okay? That makes, but, you use the same things, you use the same principles, function, management, planning, organizing, directing, controlling, business, pro production, operations, human resources, and all of that. But the basic difference here is that in, in government, you have more constituencies. You have constituencies like civil service, the ombudsman, the Santigan Bayan, the media, sometimes who can be very exacting. Now, hindi lang hindi lang mainstream media, social media pa, natagtagan. Uh, in the private organization, you also have that, but it depends on how you manage it. So those are the basic, uh, that's why uh, you are distracted by those things. And uh, even in private sports organizations, some of our colleagues are distracted by this, uh, by this, uh, or cases uh, or disputes that are brought before the Philippine Olympic Committee or to the IOC or to the member of the International Federation. And th those are the bumps and humps. Uh, and of course, the availability of, of money. You know, you wish you could do more. You wish you could help the athletes more. But you know, that's, that's what you have. So you just have to make do with it. And that is where being imaginative and creative comes in and when you are a, when you are forced to improvise i am a galing ang filipino dance improvisation we are good at that uh, sir 
Sir, uh, presumptively a part of those uh, uh, disappointments and frustrations you have referred to may be, may, may be from people you have worked with. Uh, how did you manage to go past personal hurts and feelings? Would you say that it, 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 you, you have sort of dealt it with in, term, in terms of like uh, classifying it as part of the social capital? Your questions are very difficult. Huh? <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm here in true confessions. <laughs> no, I'm, you know, people will always be hurt. We get hurt, we hurt other people without even knowing. Uh, that is part of life. You just have to, uh, you just have to uh, learn how to deal with it, learn how to go with the punches. There is a just recently in the, in the social media, there was a uh, little story, an anecdote that was presented by Bishop Fabinho. Uh, he said there was this man holding a cup of coffee, walking, and another man bumped into him, and therefore the cup of coffee spilled into his clothes. And uh, he, he asked, who was at fault? Why did you get your your stain in your clothes? Uh, you know, because the man bumped me. No, because you had coffee in your cup. If you had put tea in your cup, it would have been a tea stain. What he was saying is, what well, the cup is you. If, for example, your cup is full of resentment, full of anger, full of hatred, you will go after that man and start swinging after him. But if it is full of joy and peace and calm, you will just say, okay, it was an accident, no big deal. So I think that is the that is one of the ways by which to, to handle it. Um, you just lift it up to the Lord and say, Lord, I will just uh, endorse it to you. Help me deal with it. Uh, and you will need a lot of these uh, uh, prayers and uh, steadfast. So, pinapagpasa just nyo na lang, sir, basically. Yes. More or less. And you know, there is such a thing as karma. What comes around goes around. I will not. I will give a very recent example of somebody who, who did denigrated, downplayed masks and all of that, and all of these procedures and protocol on the how to handle this country's problem with the pandemic. Where is he now? So, you know, babalik at babalik yan. I'm referring to somebody who is very, very prominent, who, who is now a victim of uh, recklessness and negligence and carelessness. So, that will come out. That will, it will, uh, it will erase itself. Okay, sir. Uh, we'd like to accommodate one question also from uh, Miss Dina Bernardo herself. So she wants to personally ask you her, her, her question. Dina, Hello. do you have an audio already? Yes, I do. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Uh, I, I really appreciate your talk today, Dean. And for everybody here, he's the reason why I teach port management as well. So, Dean, my question is... Um, uh, I'm happy for Patafa because it looks like they are really trying to professionalize. But um, and so many, so many chairmen and so many administrations have come to help the NSAs really get their act together, and it's it's not happening. I think to an extent. I mean, I guess I want to ask you, what will it take for us to really get our act together? When Is you say when you say us, what do you mean? At which point? Which sector? The whole, oh, okay. sport, the whole sports sector? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, okay, maybe we can confine it to the National Sports Association. Because um, your lecture is already showing that, you know, even if you're a non-profit, you have to be professional. You have to act business-like. The only, the only um, problem is that um, NSA sport is a very public concern. You hold the the Team Philippines, so you are subject to public scrutiny and yet you have to act in a way that could help you also generate funds for your organization. And so, 
um, lahat po ho, ngayon, umaasa lagi sa gobyerno, gobyerno. Eh, pero hanggang ganito lang naman talaga mabibigyan ng gobyerno. And NSAs have to mobilize to really get other sources of funds. And you can only count on your hands the NSAs that actually do that. Hmm. So how do we... I think what you what you're saying is that you have to unify because we will all have difficulty getting sponsorship money if, they, if we appear divided and we, we, we quarrel, we, we bitch a lot and all of that, we will just be wasting their money. A lot of it has to do with patient dealings. We just have to talk to the person concerned and discuss your areas of common in areas where you agree. Do not talk about where you differ. Pag-usapan muna natin where we agree. For example, do we agree on this, in principle, on good governance? If you agree on good governance, eh, kailangan ito ang gawin natin. Okay? If you agree on respecting the rights of others, kailangan ganito, this is what we should do. It's going to be a very difficult process. You're up a very slippery slope with somebody up there trying to push you down, okay? Um, you're going up and there is a concerted, organized counter effort sometimes to pull you down. It will require a lot of patience. And um, and I think um, if the higher leaders, if the higher leaders, despite everything that they're doing, can take the time to give a message and to intervene by even in a small way, short time, it would send a very strong signal. You know, see President Ramos did that also. Uh, he was also trying to spend some of his precious presidential time to deal with this, an iota of a concern like sports as against national defense economy. So a lot of that will help. Very important to tell guys personal dealings with each with each one at saka medyo tabi muna yung legal siguro the lawyers put them aside first for a while and, and discuss first the areas of common interest uh, with the lawyers providing inputs and not egging the, the client or demand natin demand you know uh, that kind of thing I don't know if it's a, that's realistic uh, but that's the only reason, that's the only thing I can see now. And I, you have to deal with it, absorb. And a lot of humility is required. Magpapakaano ka dyan eh. Tsaka huwag kang, huwag kang matipikon. Do not be piconated. Huwag kang matipikonated. Okay, I think is that all right, Dina? Dina? Yeah, yes, sir. Hello. Dapat po, dapat po eh... Uh, sana the NSAs can come together and realize that uh, they have to professionalize, they have to do the work. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dean. Thank you, uh, Miss Dina Bernardo. Yeah, I, I, my, my next question is uh, actually uh, highly relevant to what uh, Mr. Dina, Dina mentioned or asked you. Uh, you have, uh, you have, uh, Served the government for an extensive uh, time, uh, especially uh, as uh, former Philippine Sports Commission chairman. I think that was back 1996, sir. 1995. What year was that? About four years. Nin three years. 1995 to 1999. Yeah, I was about okay. like, uh, 23 years old. 23 years old lang po yata ako nun, uh, <laughs> Batang bata. Uh, but now you are on the other side of the fence, being the president of the Philippine Athletics Faculty uh, Association. Uh, so to speak, uh, and then uh, it's basically Patafa is a uh, private uh, organization. How is that previous uh, sport management experience a liability or an advantage uh, for you in your uh, dispensing your responsibility as the leader of the uh, uh, association of the Patafa? Well, uh, I know the I know what to expect from government because I was there before. I know what to expect from them in terms of what can you get, when can you get it, because we always have that problem of bureaucracy, you know, details, labas. So we always plan adjusting to that. Okay, we always try to tell people, if 
if you have to do this and you have to give the PS, you need this money by a certain time, you have to give them twice the leeway because there are systemic problems there, not just there, but even in outside agencies. And si Simulaya, sa DBM, si Mungagani na pera, yung Revistun. So, that is one lesson I learned, to be realistic and to manage my expectations. Okay, as an NSA president. And also as BSC before, I learned how to manage my expectations of NSAs and my co-government, fellow government administrators. Um, so, um, you learn to deal with it, but it still requires planning. You must have a plan so that you can react properly. Uh, and you must keep on consulting your people. A lot of, there are a lot of good people in the NSA, in the sports organization. They know their stuff, they have the experience, they know the people involved, they, they've, had, they've got good EQ, emotional quotient, EQ, they're, they're, they're there, they're there to be used and uh, just manage your expectations. Do not think that just because you have a good plan, you will get the support of everybody. You know, you are competing as an NSA for funds from the PSC. PSC, you are competing against other agencies for, for government money. So manage your expectations. So, uh, uh, I, I, it's sort of like a bit controversial question, but I wanted to ask this. Like, were there any moments that you were uh, restraining yourself to get tempted to uh, get exasperated or sort of like disappointed because you know some people especially when they used to hold the same position uh, as the one that they're dealing currently dealing uh, they tend to sort of like uh, refer back to their heydays or glory days like, like during my time hindi ganyan dapat ganun. so did, did you have those kinds of moments uh, when you now that you're the Patafa president and now you're sort of like on the receiving end uh, from from uh, with respect to dealing with uh, the PSG Sports Commission? No, not really. I think I understand government more and more. Mm -hmm. Because, um, like for example, to this pandemic, government resources are limited. So everybody's budget is cut in half or more, or I don't know how much. So you have to learn to deal with it. There is no point in complaining. It is very frustrating. But those are the cards that are dealt you. You have to play using those cards. You have to deal with it. Uh, you cannot throw away the cards and walk out of the game. Or else that's the end of it. So you just have to deal. Now, if you lose that deal, okay, next deal, you just have to. That's the way it is. You win some, uh, you lose less. So uh, you just have to roll with the punches and learn from that experience. Okay, so that's uh, like we, we, uh, we're trying to compare your experience with your PSC uh, stint and now you're as a Patava person. There were many Apple, moments. Apples and okay, there, were many, there, were, there were many moments of frustration. Uh, like, mm -hmm. for example, uh, uh, things don't work out. You had planned it to the to the T. Every detail was there. And every answer was not approved by higher ups. You know, frustrated that some people do not fight for you as much as you expect them to fight for you. Uh, so it's like comparing uh, apples and oranges with uh, your state in PSC and now your Aspatapa president. Now let's compare orange and orange. You are also a leader uh, in, uh, of one uh, major sports league, uh, the Philippine Super League. How is that different uh, uh, providing? How is it providing leadership in that organization different with your uh, leadership in the Patama? Well, una -una, you still use the same principles, no? Planning, organizing, directing, control. You have the same basic. Uh, in the PSC, in the what we call this, the PSL, your major stakeholders are the team owners, okay, and the athletes. Uh, in the Patapa, in the track and field, your major stakeholders, major in the sense that they are the ones affected by what you do, are the athletes. 
okay, and the major stakeholders in PSL look at one thing, no? They're they're sensible exposure, so you have to guarantee that to them, which is the same thing you want to do for your sport, but for the sport and for the athletes, not just for the team, not just for the athletes in the case of PSC. And in other words, it's a uh, uh, PSC, uh, PSL is more prone to be analyzed as a business entity, okay? Being analyzed as a business entity. Whereas Patapa, there are developmental aspects in Patapa, like kids athletics, grassroots. Well, there are development programs, whereas in PSL, we still have to come around to that to have a development program because the major concern now is survival, especially in this uh, pandemic. No? We have to survive, and as they say, to revive, survive, and thrive. Uh, oh, uh, I have a few more questions remaining, so um, let's um, zoom, zoom into sport management. So sport management uh, as a discipline is relatively a young uh, subject matter in the country, especially the Philippines, uh, a country like the Philippines. Given the dominant cultural peculiarities of our country, of our, us as people, uh, do, you, do you think all the principles you have discussed in the first part of this talk uh, are highly relevant with how the sports industry or the sports sector uh, is navigating itself uh, in the country? Or you, you see the need to somehow dumb down or to simplify some of those uh, uh, principles that we have discussed? Well, I think at least the way I presented them, they were simplified, no? Uh, a lot of, some of these things, our, uh, our colleagues, both in the NSA and even in the POC, learned this in college. Um, the problem is maybe some of them don't practice it or maybe they practice it unconsciously not consciously and deliberately because if you practice it consciously and deliberately you have a better perspective you have a better insight on its utility or non-utility okay so um they're still relevant kailangan lang i practice I practice especially this planning portion. Some of them said, I remember one colleague in the PSC before telling me as if to downplay the master plan. Plano kayo ng plano, walang pera. I said, kaya ko nga nagpa-plano eh. Dahil kasi wala kang pera. Kasi you want to raise resources. Sino magbibigay sa'yo ng plano, ng resources, kung wala kang malang kapakita plano? You know, parang you only plan if you have the money. What, what you will wait for mana from heaven you have to extract it solicit it convince people that uh, it will be put to good use over a period of time that was really a, a an eye opener plano na plano wala namang pera para ba yung plan sa kanya is the, already the operating plan not the conceptual plan if you can understand that there are several levels of planning okay so, uh, 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 okay, sir, continue. That is even probably that is an answer to one of your questions. Did I find anything frustrating? Yung pala, yung incident na yun. Ah, sabi ko, my gosh. Sabi mo, plano na plano, walang pera. Ano, ano, ano pa? Okay, that's it. Uh, I, I'm down to my last question. Uh, it's more of like I'm thinking that uh, maybe our, our audience are interested really to uh, hear this from you. Uh, what, if there's only one advice that you could give to those who are uh, considering uh, getting into or entering or having a career in sport administration or sport management, what could that be? Sorry, sorry uh, Edward, could you repeat that? My okay. granddaughter started talking to me. <laughs> uh, Okay, sir. Uh, if there's one, if there's one advice, okay, uh, that uh, you could give to those people who are considering to get into or have a career in sports administration or sport management, what could that be? Okay, um, number one, 
you must like sports. You must have a passion for it because if you're not passionate about it, you will easily be distracted. Okay, number two, you must be willing, you must learn how to live with others. Okay? Kailangan marunong kang makisama, not, not makisama in the sense that you will join wrongdoing, no? But you must learn how to relate with each other. And number three, you must have the basics of uh, of of accountability. Meron perang pumasok, kailangan paglabas, you must be able to account for it. Okay? And how best to, to use it. And then, I think one of the final things is uh, um, surround yourself with the right people. You, you remember that each step, that's each step framework, I said, create a coalition of like-minded people so that you can refer to them in moments of doubt when you have difficulty reconciling with the, the options with your vision, mission, and values. Yeah, uh, I think first, you have to like most part, very passionate about it. Uh, and reconcile yourself with the fact that it will, a serious NSA leader will give it more time than you thought was necessary. Hindi pa pwede yung sobra, sobrang part-time and sobrang delegation. Hindi pa pwede yun. Hindi pa pwede yun. Unang-una, it sends a bad signal to your athletes to your stakeholders, to everyone. It's just a sideline for you. Even if it is a sideline, because, because in the sense you have a main uh, vocation that feeds your family, please make sure when you commit, you find time to manage your time. Okay? Okay, sir. Uh, although, even though we want to maximize the moment that you we have with you and to really squeeze out the uh, expertise from your uh, season brain, uh, we, we felt that we feel that we we are uh, overstaying our or uh, too much uh, maximizing our opportunity with you. We thank you so much, sir, for uh, 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 our, uh, allowing us and uh, accepting our invitation to be our featured speaker for uh, this edition of Patapa Pet Talks. We have learned so much, and I guess all our audience, members of the audience as well, have learned so much. We will uh, rebroadcast this uh, recorded uh, uh, lecture or uh, talk session through our Patapa YouTube channel. And uh, we have one uh, request here also. I think uh, Dina is referring to it. And she she mentioned about the master plan, but I think she's referring to the uh, uh, maybe the PowerPoint. I will be glad to. What did she mention? Uh, she's uh, mentioning that if we can uh, put online the master plan, uh, many items so relevant there. So maybe she is uh, referring to the 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 deck or the PowerPoint slide. We yeah. don't mind to share it. It's a public. It's sort of like any, any everybody could benefit from that. So it's yeah. not a. Uh, so uh, we will share that uh, through our uh, Patafa Facebook page. So thank you very much, uh, sir, Dr. Billy Quico, our uh, Patafa pre president, and uh, speaking from his experience as former PSC chairman and dean of college, uh, the graduate school, business school of De La Salle University. Thank you so much, sir, and we thank all all, all our uh, participants in this talk. Uh, for joining us and uh, allotting time to be with us and also learn from the master himself. Uh, we'll have again another episode next month. Uh, we'll just announce the topic uh, in the coming days. And we thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone. Thank you, sir, again. And thank you uh, to Ms. Dina Bernardo. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.